Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorian. Now, um, I would say that I'm probably as guilty as anyone of bigging up the cookery. Um, now, this isn't a video primarily about cookeries. It's actually a video a little bit more about Bowie knives. Bowie or Bowie, I don't care how you pronounce it. But let's come to those in a minute. Um, so in recent times, with shows like Forged in Fire and Knife or Death, which incidentally I'm a big fan of, I really enjoy watching that, um, and some people I know have been on it, which is kind of cool to see you know, people at least who I know, I know who they are, even if I don't know them um, fantastically well um, personally, it's fun to see them on the show. But um, a lot of people have throughout, well really we can say the last couple of hundred years, have noted that the cookery is quite a fearsome weapon. And one of the qualities of the cookery is it can cut through things that a much larger blade um, would cut through normally, um, but you can manage it with essentially a 12 inch blade when you've got this cookery format. And there's a number of reasons for that. It's to do little bit to do with edge geometry, but it's more to do with the shape of the edge and the fact that it, you almost have this axe-like um, uh, kind of edge that uh, tilts forward, forward of the axis of your hand, so it strikes in front of what your hand feels as the natural striking point. And of course, it means that when it hits most things, it's hitting at a, an angle, at a slant, which is one of the advantages, um, arguably, that we get from curved blades as opposed to straight blades. That's a complicated topic, but um, essentially it means that you're getting a natural slicing or almost hacking um, effect uh, with an angled edge, which means you're not um, going up the edge gradient at 90 degrees, you're actually going up the edge gradient at uh, 45 degrees, which in some sense kind of makes it like the edge is sharper than it is because it makes the angle at the edge bevel essentially a more uh, um, acute, a smaller angle. Um, so if we watch um, shows like um, Forge and Fire, Knife or Death, or just generally just backyard test cutting, whatever, you'll notice that cookeries are very, very formidable choppers. But are they awesome hand weapons if we're talking about large knife sized things? Now, clearly I've spoken about in the past if I just grab uh, a sword, the first one that comes to hand. Um, clearly against someone using a sword, one of the problems of using something like a cookery is you have a colossal reach advantage. And um, I, I think that we can, most people will agree that uh, when the cookery came about and don't think that there's a continual presence of the cookery from uh, weapons like the uh, coppice or falcata throughout history to the, what we would say, the 17th, 18th century cookery. There isn't. Uh, as far as Nepal's concerned, and in fact India as well, because inextricably linked in terms of their weapon evolution, um, the, the weapon that we now know as the cookery didn't really come around until about the 16th, 17th century. Um, before that, there were other related weapons, and in fact we do see, so if we look at Indian um, uh, statues and sculptures and other forms of artwork, from before the 16th century, we do see blades, both knives and swords, that have this style of tilted forward um, uh, blade on them, usually larger than the knife size. But the, the cookery, as we see here, came about really in the 16th, 17th century. And we do know that, at least originally, the cookery was often used with a shield. Now, obviously, if you're using a shield, that enables you to cover the line as you're coming in close and strike with the sword um, or knife. Um, in much the same way as the Roman gladius. Um, a lot of people talk about the Roman gladius as the sword that conquered the world, which is kind of a weird thing to say because the Romans didn't conquer the world, but they conquered a large area of, um, of Europe and um, North Africa uh, and a little bit of the Middle East. But um, they, uh, the, the gladius by itself didn't conquer anything. The gladius used with a really massive shield it was a weapon system, was a weapon set, equipment set, that is, you know, the Gladius wouldn't have worked as an effective sword if it was only being used by itself. It had to be used with a massive shield. Now, I'm not saying that cookeries to be effective weapons have to be used with shields, but I think that when we look at weapon evolution and where a weapon comes from and why it's a certain size and why it's a certain shape, you have to look at 
its roots and where it comes from. And certainly with the cookery, it does seem that its roots comes from a period where in close combat, most people were using shields. Um, and that's true of many short swords, incidentally. And relative to uh, Nepalese people, this really is a short sword. Don't necessarily see it as, um, a, as a knife. It kind of borders that, and if you look at the 19th century sources, they're often confused about how to refer to this. Some people refer to it as a, as a short sword, and some people refer to it as a knife. And uh, it's really that kind of borderline um, between one and the other. And remember that the size of weapons is also related to the size of people, and anybody who knows the Nepalese will know that Nepalese people are generally quite a bit smaller than the average European. And indeed, if we go back to the 18th century, we know they're very small. And even in India, the Nepalese were regarded as, as very small, very short. And they're shown in art at the time as being significantly shorter than the Indian sepoys or soldiers who they were serving alongside in, or fighting against in some cases. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so the Nepalese being smaller. So this is a big knife to me. And I'm a six foot one European in the modern world. But to a five foot one um, Nepalese person living in the 18th century, this is proportionally even a bigger weapon. Anyway, as a fighting weapon, yes, obviously they're great. I'm not, I'm not in any way downplaying how good the uh, cookery is. But if we were to ask the question of Matt, uh, what would you choose? If you were cho choosing a large fighting knife, uh, what would I personally choose? It wouldn't be the cookery, even though I love the cookery, I love the cookery's history, I love the, all of the 19th century accounts that describe these being used, both in warfare, uh, but also in hunting as well. The Nepalese being tough uh, people that they were, uh, used to go tiger hunting with these, and only with these. Uh, yeah, that's right, they used to single-handedly go and take out tigers with just a cookery. So I love the culture and the history and the design and the look and the variations and everything else, the evolution of the um, sort of design of them, the different models. I love the cookery, so not to downplay that, but I absolutely would personally choose a Bowie knife. Now, I'll come into why in a second. Now, I actually see the cookery as an utterly specialised weapon. So in my opinion, it has sacrificed several things in order to be one of the best choppers around. And I don't think it's any coincidence that uh, the winner, I believe, or the, no, the finalist, at least, one of the finalists, I think he came second, yeah, in the first season of uh, Forged in Fire, Knife or Death, uh, was using a cookery, admittedly slightly larger than this. It was specialised, specially made modern version, but the blade fundamentally was a large cookery. And I don't think that it's any coincidence that cookeries have done very well in that cutting competition, because it's not a knife fighting competition, it's not a sparring competition, it's not a martial arts competition, it is really just a chopping competition. But that's great, okay? It is, it's good fun, and I like the format of the show. And cookeries in that context are fearsome, very difficult to match up against, but they are specialised. This is an example of another, what I would consider equally specialised weapon. But you can see it's a totally different shape, totally different type of hilt, because it is utterly specialised to stabbing through things, specifically through thick clothing, gambesons and other forms of padded armour, and uh, into mail armour, and between the plates of plate armour and things like brigandines and corazina and things like this. So this is an utterly specialised 14th to 16th century um, medieval rondelle dagger. Uh, this one made by uh, Todd, um, and I'll stick a link to Todd's website below. This one, this cookery incidentally is an antique, so I can't stick a link to, to that, apart from to my own website, Eastern Antique Arms, where you can buy such things. Um, and this is utterly specialised to one context, and to me, not in the same way, but in a different way, this is specialised to a um, specific context as well, and that is of chopping, um, chopping people, chopping animals. They, you know, sac do sacrifice with these. They behead um, goats all the way up to uh, cows, not cows because they're holy animals, but uh, buffalo sized things, um, but primarily goats. Um, so these will chop through meat f and wood and pretty much anything else you stick in their way phenomenally well. But as a fighting knife, in my opinion, it has two big deficiencies, things that I for the way that I use a knife, if I'm sparring with knife in, in my martial arts club, um, 
that for me and the way that I use a knife would be problems for a cookery. Uh, number one is there is no form of handguard whatsoever. Now, you have to say with knives, handguards are a little bit of a, can be a bit of a distraction. Um, they don't really guard your hand very much. They don't, in realistic terms, actually provide much protection against the opponent's weapon because of the shortness of the blade and the angles that knives come in at at very close distance. Your hands are super vulnerable anyway in, in, in a knife fight, even if you've got a great big cross guard or um, something like this. You'd really have to put something really significant, almost like a, di almost like a bowl guard, a disc guard, like you see on some uh, Roman gladiatorial um, swords. You'd need to put something really quite big on, almost like an epee guard, to really protect the hand with a knife-sized blade. But to me, more importantly than that, one of the things that the guard does is it prevents the hand from travelling up onto the blade in all sorts of situations. Now, that's not necessarily a problem with the cookery if you're using it only like a cookery. So if I'm only swinging with the cookery, okay, then all that wants to happen is my hand actually wants to move this way down the grip away from the blade. So it's no problem that there's nothing to stop my hand riding up because I'm not doing any movements like jabs or thrusts, generally speaking, that would be a big problem for that. I'm mostly swinging with the edge and my hand is only wanting to slide down towards the pommel end. And you'll notice that traditional cookeries, and this sometimes when you see modern made uh, kind of modern versions of cookeries, they sometimes get a bit wrong. You have to have a flared out, essentially pommel at the end to prevent your hand from flying off the end. And you see this with certain types of machete and barong and parang and uh, things like this, that you really need, if you're gonna be using a swinging weapon which has a lot of forward weight, and uh, in addition, in fact, earlier I should have mentioned, as well as the shape, it's the fact that you've got a lot of mass at the tip, and one of the reasons why they cut so well. Because you've got a lot of weight at the tip and the point of balance is quite far up, you really need something to prevent your hand swinging off the end, okay? And this is perhaps one of the reasons that migration era and Viking era swords have such characteristic pommels uh, to prevent the hand from uh, slipping at all when you're swinging something which is quite forward balanced with quite broad tips. Um, so when you've got this type of uh, weapon and you're using this kind of way, it's not a problem, but that's not personally the way that I would use a knife uh, or that I would prefer to use a knife in a knife on knife, one on one knife encounter. Um, I want to be able to thrust um, and therefore I need a guard to prevent my hand from sliding up. Now, one thing I will just caveat, I've actually got two cookeries here. You'll notice that cookeries very often, if I just focus on these, have this band around the middle and I've spoken about these in previous videos. What you find is when you actually lock the hand onto the cookery's grip that the pretty much usually the middle two fingers go either side of this band and they do to some extent prevent the hand from sliding up or sliding down. Older cookeries actually have a more prominent um, projection in the middle, this band, that locks between those two fingers. And that does prevent, you can stab with a, a cookery, theoretically, um, and it would, in theory, prevent the hand from riding up. But I like the assurity of having something a bit more, a bit more of a guard, a bit more of a bolster, something a bit more here to prevent the hand from riding up onto the blade. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the way that I prefer to use a knife is predominantly as a stabbing weapon. Now, not to say that the cookery can't stab. You absolutely can. Funnily enough, this tilted forward design, which is primarily to make a more effective cut, you'll actually notice it's kind of like a pistol. If you think of a flintlock or percussion lock pistol, it's kind of a similar angle, isn't it? And if you just hold the weapon straight forward, you'll notice that the blade naturally points forward. So in some ways, it's actually quite well lined up for direct thrusts, but the tip is not usually really well formed for very effective thrusting. Certainly against people wearing layers of clothing, this might not be a problem in some parts of India, for example, and certainly in summer, um, but if you were in Europe, for example, if you wanna get through a winter coat, that type of very fat tip, which note on these is not edged at the back, it's blunt on the back, so you've only got one edge on the front, blunt on the back, and it's quite broad and not very 
pointy, essentially, not very acute at the point, um, is going to struggle at getting through layers of clothing. So they're not great at thrusting. And of course, in struggling at getting in, you're going to meet a lot of resistance at the back, which is going to make it more likely the hand's going to ride up. So essentially, and the fact that you've got a crooked angle here, you might think that's great because the point's online, but it means the energy actually goes this way through the blade instead of straight down into the hand, it actually makes the weapon want to be pushed away from the angle that the force is being generated in. Um, so the hand is going to get driven down usually, or the point get deflected up. Uh, neither of which are good things if you're trying to get deep penetration. Um, so by and large, the cookery is not a good thrusting weapon for two reasons. One, well, three reasons in fact. One, the angle of the blade. Two, the style of the point. Three, the cross guard. Now, coming to the Bowie knife. The Bowie knife is not as good a cutter as the cookery, okay, in general. You can make bowie knives broader, you can make them heavier, you can make them longer, you can make them more effective at doing one thing or another, but generally speaking, my preference for a bowie knife is um, of around a nine or 10 inch blade. A little bit bigger, a little bit smaller is fine. Um, and with enough width that if someone stabs or cuts at you, you can counter cut into their incoming arm and it will have enough force that it will be quite nasty against their arm. So you can literally defend by, by cutting in. But the attacks would not, for me, with a, with a Bowie knife, primarily be cuts, unless maybe they might be harrying cuts at the opponent's hand if they're holding it extended. Primarily, I want to be using that, the point. Why? Because the point goes best through clothes. It is most often most fatal um, and most serious wounding. And importantly, it reaches the furthest. And reach, any reach you can get, especially in a knife fight, but obviously applies to all weapons, is super important, okay? Especially when we think in percentage terms, where was with a sword, we might have a weapon which has a three or four foot blade. Um, with a knife, we've only got a one foot blade. And that means the length, the reach we get from our arms and our step and the way we use our body Okay, any extra length on this blade or any extra reach that you can utilize makes in percentage terms a bigger difference in the actual fight. So Bowie knives have pretty good cutting capacity, they have excellent thrusting capacity, and they have a guard. And the guard prevents, obviously if you're using the point, prevents the hand from riding up onto the blade and this kind of thing. You'll notice, as I said, the guard doesn't really provide any great protection or quality to my hand whatsoever. And some people who talk about Bowie knives in somewhat romantic terms, at the end of the day, it's a bit like a carving knife. There's no real difference to a carving knife or a large kitchen knife. It's just got a guard added to it. Um, but some people who talk about Bowie knives that they're like they're some kind of mystical, magical weapon um, and talk about parrying with the back of the blade and catching things in the Spanish notch and using those brass bits you get on some of them to catch the edge of the opponent's blade and things like this and or having curled up quillons to lock the opponent's weapon into like but then yours would become locked as well. There is a lot of BS written about Bowie knives. And there was a lot of BS written about Bowie knives in the 19th century as well. It's not all modern. At the end of the day, it's a relatively large knife that you can cut and thrust with, and it has a guard on it. That's, that's they're the only important things to know. Um, right, so finally, um, and I have shown this before, this is a hybrid weapon that combines some of the best of both. So it is essentially what I would call a Bowie cookery. Now you'll notice compared to the traditional cookery, it has less curve, but they've compensated for that by giving it more length and more flair. Now obviously, there are some disadvantages to having a knife which is bigger because it's more difficult to carry. However, this is probably Anglo-Indian from about 1900. Um, and it's made probably for hunting or, or just as a curio, who knows. Um, but the style of the hilt and guard, with notice it's kind of got esquillons, and the ferrule with um, grooves in it is very, and the butt cap as well, <laughs> is uh, very much in the style of Anglo-Indian Bowie knives from the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century that were pre predominantly used as kind of field uh, and hunting knives. So when you're out hunting tigers or um, or deer or whatever, your side knife, your sidearm, would be essentially a large knife of some kind. And you get them with straight blades, single edge blades, double edge blades, Bowie knife blades, and very occasionally with un more unusual blades like this 
adapted cookery blade. And you'll notice it's got a fuller in the blade, rather like some Bowie knives have. Uh, as mentioned, it's made larger and more flared. It's a little bit more weighted back towards um, the point of balance is a bit closer to the hand than most cookeries are. You'll also notice its cross section is somewhat different because they've added a false edge here and given it a spear point. So what they've done to this cookery, well, I call it a cookery, it's not really a cookery. What they've done to this hunting knife is essentially combined some of the features that I prefer or that I like of cookeries, of a traditional cookery, with some of the features of a Bowie knife. Okay, in other words, they have made it better adapted to thrusting and they have added a guard. Um, they've also changed the style of the grip. It has to be said, I think a lot of people who are not used to cookery grips don't find them particularly comfortable. And this is a more traditional, and to me, I have to say actually more comfortable um, kind of hunting knife grip in kind of large proportions. Right, so uh, I'm going to wrap it up there, but really, just to say, uh, in a 19th century context, if I was carrying a sidearm around, I would probably veer towards the Bowie knife, just because I think it's more practical for more things, and as a fighting knife, I actually think for certainly people who are experienced in European swordsmanship, this is the kind of knife sidearm self-defense implement. Um, the cookery is very specifically a chopping weapon um, that is used in a specific way and doesn't really, in my opinion, and I know opinions will vary, some people get very passionate, especially about knives and cookeries and bowie knives, um, in my opinion, doesn't adapt itself so well to a kind of self-defense uh, role in a 19th century context. Right, I'm going to finish up there. Cheers for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys really, really soon and uh, for another video on another topic. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.